with 41 episodes to rank in this season, I have watched all in a row deciding what to rank between S and F tier, and I'm more than proud to say that season 1 of Spongebob does not have any F tiers or D tiers. So round of applause for that. However, we do have a few C tiers, and C tiers aren't bad by any means, it just means they're alright episodes that they come on TV, but it's not like you'll go search for them. So, coming in at number 41, and I don't like to use the word worst because none of these episodes are bad. This one right here is not bad. However, something has to be last place, and it is I Was a Teenage Gary. And this episode does actually have a lot of funny bits. I do like episodes with Squidward and Gary present, and this has both of them. But it kind of becomes weird, and this is like the first time with transforming the characters into like weird specimens. Thinking that they like contracted snail pox or something. But quickly the, uh, the humor starts to wear off and it becomes this weird like fest of everyone becoming this Gary. And compared to the other episodes and watching this compared to the literal masterpieces of the season, this has to be uh, one of the weaker, which is why it's at 41. All right, coming in at number 40 is The Paper, which also in C tier mainly because of the reasoning. It's kind of forgettable. It has really funny moments. And I do like the Squidward like roast game they have with the puppet. However, this episode is shared with Valentine's Day, which as you know, only airs one time a year. So it's automatically masked by that in terms of nostalgia. It of course has this great meme right here where Spongebob schools Squidward, which is obviously hilarious, but at the same time, I'm not sure if that saves it from C tier, but it is a great reference point. All that occurs is Squidward gets gaslit by Spongebob that this paper is almost like priceless just because Squidward made some BS promise. So Squidward gives him everything he's ever earned in order to have this piece of paper. And at the end he gets a citation it all ends kind of badly for my man Squidward. Moving on to number 39. Alright, so the main reason this episode is lower on the list is because... It shows like a darker side of Squidward and though he does get redemption, the episode ends up, you know, nicely wrapped in a bow. It's one of the ones where like, you feel a little bit of sympathy and you're not too sure whether or not to laugh. Just like every other episode in this season, everything is incredibly meme worthy. But something has to take 39th place. Squidward's cruel joke in light of the other episodes kind of set it as a mid-tone. I mean, I'm kind of on Squidward's side because Spongebob does the utmost to be a menace to Squidward. And then suddenly when Squidward does something about it, he's the bad guy. Everyone gets what they deserve, I suppose, in the end. This is the last C-tier episode. Everything else is B or above. Now, this kind of sucks to say because this also is shared by the other C-tier episode, I Was a Teenage Gary, meaning when this episode comes on, you're kind of in for a mid-time, when you could be watching something like Pretty Patties or Krusty Krab Pizza. SpongeBob and Patrick do their thing, where they dress up for Halloween and they have to go out trying to scare people. SpongeBob wishes to be a ghost, but he's like too square, and so everyone calls him a mattress and laughs at him. Which I guess is quirky and a little bit funny, but it's not like they're scared of him even as a ghost. They do get like four minutes of fame, if that's what you can even call it, while everyone's at the Krusty Krab attending a party, Stardew Valley style. It is then revealed that Spongebob is actually not in like a costume or a round sponge. It's just he's completely shaved off, which is a little bit weird, especially when you get hit back to back with the weird Gary episode. So overall, both of these end up in C tier. Now it is time for B. At 37 is Mermaid and Barnacle Boy 1. 
barely squeaking it into B tier. However, I feel like it deserves it. There are just way too many funny references, and I think this is a great way to actually introduce the characters, especially if you consider it from SpongeBob and Patrick's standpoint, where they are fans of it. It could have been presented like an opening with a huge fight scene with them, and then they would get introduced later, but it is explained perfectly by Spongebob and Patrick shenanigans. I really enjoy the POV from Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy as they're in the retirement home. I think it's a hilarious segment throughout the entire episode. Barnacle Boy is probably my favorite among the two as his attitude goes far in terms of humor and complexity. Also, this part where they call the old people because they're just fish and they have this Aquaman power is pretty funny. You always kind of seem to forget that the residents are fish. Number 36 is Nature Pants. I feel like Spongebob deciding it's his time to take on the wild is a very funny segment. Patrick obviously showing deep remorse and getting very hostile towards the situation to the point where it drives him to basically want to murder spongebob not to mention this meme here it's classic it's great you are not unhappy when this episode pulls up on your tv spongebob does eventually learn his lesson he goes back home everyone hugs him valentine's day was an episode like i said previously that only aired once a year and I feel like that actually probably helped its ranking because it's one of those episodes I feel like if it was like daily or maybe even weekly it could get kind of oversaturated and on your nerves. But the fact it's only played once a year and you recognize it for that day of the year to go along with the fact it's funny and a good episode it shows Patrick's misunderstanding of his surroundings. And the idea of Patrick going around thinking everything is for him just because it's Valentine's Day is pretty funny just to get mad when Spongebob presents him a handshake and makes it as if that's his present. Patrick is okay with a quarter, but a handshake is way too little. Patrick is clearly not having it, but he does get a very nice chocolate balloon at the end that splatters everywhere. He laughs, he loves it, he has a great time. 35th place is actually a pretty good hold for this episode and I feel like everyone should watch it at least once a year. At 34th place is Home Sweet Pineapple. Spongebob House gets eaten by nematodes, or should I say drained, where he is forced to live with Patrick for a time being. It's a huge hilarious part. He wants to do any and everything he can to prevent him having to go back to his parents where he would have to live away from his friends. Patrick clearly wants him there as well. I like the focus between the best friends on this episode and it's hilarious segment. Patrick does try his best to help. Correct me if I'm wrong, but this might be the first time we see SpongeBob's parents as well. And it's in a loving, introductive manner, so that's a bonus. And Squidward even gives SpongeBob a glass of water showing very much sympathy. And then he definitely lets Spongebob stay and sleep there for the rest of the episode. Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy 2 taking the 33rd spot. This focuses on the conch shell in which they have to complete any task when called upon in case of danger. Spongebob receives this through the mail for being a very good artist in macaroni sculptures in which he made life-size replicas of Mermaid Man and Barnacle Boy. This shows a very funny mix and duo between the heroes and Spongebob as they actually don't mind at first since they don't really have much to do nowadays. So I believe if Spongebob only did this like once a week, maybe like twice a month, he would be fine. But he kept doing this every day, annoying the heroes in a very funny manner. Anytime Barnacle Boy is upset is usually a fun time to be had. We get to see Spongebob dress up, hang out with the heroes of his dreams, and he gets to save them from the dirty bubble, which that obviously builds a lot of friendships. Spongebob is thrilled he could help out. He actually feels a part of something. And then they have a good time making this episode feel wholesome, and I'm very glad to have it in the first season. All right, now this one may come as a surprise to a lot of you. A lot of you may have been expecting this to be A tier or S tier. 
but to me in 32nd place is squeaky boots mainly because i agree with mr krabs this is annoying the boots become very very present especially if you watch this episode more than twice a year the squeaks will actually haunt your dreams because it does have an abundance of funny moments especially in the retrospect of mr krabs i'm so happy he did what he did to those boots the part where he has a mental breakdown is one of my favorites and the moment he finally decides to cook them up and put them on the menu is the moment i decided this episode was high B tier. Neptune Spatula in 31st place actually makes a lot of sense in my eyes as it's an episode I watched quite a bit as a child and I think that the games against Spongebob and King Neptune are very pleasant to watch because King Neptune has an immense ego but he also knows when he is at defeat. Spongebob becoming a Neptune god for a moment is hilarious. And I feel like Spongebob is truly given the respect he deserves. And that is why this episode is in the higher ranking on the B tier. ARG is a classic Spongebob episode. And it was actually very close into being in the A tier. But I feel like it just doesn't have that oomph like the other A tiers does. But it is a very good classic one. Mr. Krabs harassing Spongebob to play this goofy game to me is hilarious. The whole pirate adventure is a classic and the reveal that it's just a board game along with the whole Whis thing this episode deserves the love. R.I.P. Patrick and Spongebob all they wanted to do was share but they got baloney. Muscle Bob is another classic to me and one that I remember very well. Spongebob very insecure as you can see about his masculinity. He doesn't want to train with Sandy because she has extreme practices. So he feels the need to get fake muscles and eventually it does end up biting him. Karma is what it is, but before that point, this episode is a great example of what a Spongebob episode should be. It has a whole bunch of potential. Spongebob, every corner of this is a meme. The only thing holding this back from being A tier, this is the last one on the B tier. It just has an unpleasant ending where Spongebob gets completely demolished and humiliated. He gets scolded by Sandy in which she puts him through a very odd form of workout where he just has to keep pushing a TV remote. Almost there. We are now on the A tier portion of season one. These episodes I have deemed Gucci and Among the Greats. Starting off with Squidward the Unfriendly Ghost. This is the episode where Squidward pretends to be dead and has Spongebob and Patrick treated as servants for him in the afterlife. Where they actually start trying to kill him and bury him. I think the entirety of this episode and the direction it takes along with the jokes it makes definitely places itself high in the tier list. Squidward does eventually have to confess that, you know what, I'm not dead. Y'all being stupid, I'm just gonna relax after I scold y'all. It's a pretty good ending for an episode where I think it's perfectly chaotic. SB129, now I know this might be a lot higher on more people's list, but to me, it's a very solid episode, obviously in the A tier. But I feel like, to me, there are plenty others that I would rather prefer come on TV or, you know, like, watch in general that are straight banger. A thousand memes for this one, and this one is heavily used for YTPs. Everyone, of course, gets to enjoy the anxiety of this entire alone Squidward self-traumatic anxiety attack. He doesn't really learn anything, but this episode is definitely a great watch. Number 26, Opposite Day. The title is pretty self-explanatory. Everything in this episode is perceived as opposite due to Spongebob and Patrick being menaces. There they are wishing Squidward happy birthday, even though it's not his birthday. Now this comes as great inconvenience to Squidward because he is trying to get his home featured and potentially sold where Spongebob and Patrick puts that at jeopardy. The entirety of Spongebob and Patrick pretending to be Squidward where the realtor is there is extremely comedic and half the reason why this episode is so high because I love this torture for the realtor. 
the everyone being Squidward meme and the entire running gag is amazing. And Gary being right there at the end is a cherry on top that I love. She is so fed up with this. She's not having it. This is a great episode to watch. At a crisp 25th place is Boating School. Extreme points as I'm almost positive this is the first time we do get to see Mrs. Puff. And I think this is a great way of introducing her. We're obviously almost instantly informed that Spongebob has done this numerous times and is indeed quite a bad driver in considering all aspects of the boating test. This also introduces the very first ever My Leg. Patrick decides to help Spongebob cheat in which actually helps very well. Helping Spongebob exceed in every way, almost getting his license, until he obviously fumbles the bag. I don't know if we'll ever see him officially get his license. 24th, Karate Choppers. This entire episode is goofy fun, comedic action, almost from start to finish, where Sandy and Spongebob go at it, fighting and karate showing their skills, and demonstrating just how much of a good dynamic that these two friends make. Mr. Krabs gets heavily annoyed that Spongebob brings this into the workplace and forbids him from doing any more karate, even outside of work, which I believe is a little harsh, until Mr. Krabs realizes that he can profit off of Sandy and Spongebob for realizing that they can make very quick Krabby Patties doing this skill. So at the end, Mr. Krabs is happy, Spongebob and Sandy is happy, and what more could you want from a great episode? 23rd is Reef Blower, where almost everyone can admit that this is a classic, the classic, part of the first episode set. This is the episode where they utilize no voice acting and just completely sound and effects. I'm almost 100% positive this is the only episode they did in this style and it is very creative to do an episode in this fashion because I believe almost no other cartoons have done so as Spongebob has where the rest of the series is usually voice actors. Poor Squidward. The double 22 is Hall Monitor, the last one in A tier before we go to A+. Spongebob is assigned to be the Hall Monitor for the day in the city that Mrs. Puff allows. She automatically knows that this is a bad idea. What SpongeBob doesn't know is he's actually the bad guy that everyone is warning each other about while he's trying to catch himself. Patrick, of course, is ignorant and a bliss to the situation, providing many memes and many hilarious jokes out of this episode, definitely placing this in A tier and in its very deserving spot. I just felt like these episodes deserve their own tier away from A because they have extra credit. They went the extra mile, so they deserve A+. We are obviously starting off with Suds where Spongebob leaves the fridge open, making everything cold and giving him the sickness known as Suds. There's a lot of character interaction in this episode revolving around Spongebob, Patrick, Sandy, Gary, even Mr. Krabs. This is the first time we get to see what Spongebob is into. Patrick tries to gaslight Sandy that he's a doctor and that Spongebob is okay even though he's clearly not. He ends up destroying the Krusty Krab going to the hospital anyway, even though all of that funny stuff that happened. Spongebob was gaslighted to think the doctor was scary, which is obviously not the case. We get this amazingly goofy IRL scene where Spongebob is healed, being used to scrub this very hairy man's back and foot. Definitely Dan Schneider episode right here. A for Spongebob episode and A plus since Patrick gets his karma where he pretends to be sick, wanting to have the very special treatment Spongebob did, but gets the exact opposite. Rock bottom with 20th place, the last installment before the teens. We get to see Glove World, which is amazing to see. As long as Glove World is in an episode, you know it's going to be fire. Spongebob and Patrick travel down to Rock Bottom City. Spongebob is then accidentally left behind by Patrick. We get this amazing scene where Spongebob keeps getting duped by the bus because the poor guy is hungry and he wants something from the vending machine, but every time he tries, 
A new bus appears even when he tries to flag them down. They still run away and some bozo steals his candy bar. For some reason, seeing Spongebob in this aggravated state is hilarious. I'm assuming one of the animators or storytellers or directors working on this Spongebob episode must have had a very bad experience with a bus recently. And I'm kind of glad because we get to see this masterpiece A plus of an episode. This episode holds a special place because this is one of the episodes that was on an orange VHS tape when I was a child. So I got to watch this one a lot and this is why this one is 19th place. Pearl cannot find a date so Mr. Krabs offers the homie Spongebob because he has mega riz. He shows up ready to show Pearl a good time. I would highly recommend watching this episode as there's a lot of funny stuff that goes on. He does the sponge dance. He impresses Pearl's friends. He even gets the sympathy points. Most importantly, he rizzed up Pearl who ends up liking him a lot at the end of the episode. And he impresses Mr. Krabs, his boss, and Pearl's father. And it wasn't even him. He didn't even have to try. That's how much riz Spongebob has. 19th place childhood episode. Spongebob's first time jellyfishing, 18th place. I think this showed a very nice standpoint of the animation team and the quality that Spongebob was going to be directed at in its early years. Squidward's karma decides to come around and bite him where he gets hospitalized and Patrick and Spongebob have to spend the episode taking care of him which as you can already imagine is hilarious. And of course, who could forget, firmly grasp it. Very nice, Patrick. Squidward gets to go jellyfishing, in which he actually catches a jellyfish, but then he finds the king of all jellyfishes. He finds the big one. Even more karma for Squidward. But the part I love the most at the end is when Squidward gets to release a jellyfish onto Spongebob and Patrick, and it chases and stings them while they run away. I think that is great karma on their part, and I love it. Now, 17th place, which is the next one right after this, is Plankton, which shares the same episode. So this entire episode, when it comes on TV, you know you're about to have a fire time. Both A-plus tiers. We get to see Plankton in the first seasons. He was actually incredibly small, in which in the newer seasons, he actually kind of grown a bit. So good job, Plankton. You, you did it. He tries to bribe Spongebob in order to get a Krabby Patty. And we immediately know as an audience, as children, Plankton's a bad guy and he wants to make bread off of Mr. Krabs' success. He takes control of Spongebob's mind just so he can control him and get a Krabby Patty where he can find out what the secret formula is. Squidward gets roasted crisply, which I love about this episode, and I think it's a great aspect of it. Just like almost everything else in season one, there are a lot of memeable and worthy mentions just in this episode alone. Plankton's kryptonite and weakness is obviously Krabby Patty's where he sacrifices his own mission just to taste one. Hilarious moment right here. 1% evil, 99% hot gas. Plankton didn't even get fries. 16th place, T at the Tree Dome. This is the first time we get to see Sandy. She's immediately one of the first characters introduced into the SpongeBob universe. She is a tough, feisty, durable squirrel. The first one I'm pretty sure seen in Bikini Bottom. Spongebob immediately befriends her, and I'm glad she is one of the main characters of the Spongebob universe. We have hilarious moments of Spongebob figuring out he needs water. He finds out he needs the water and able to even breathe. Hilarious meme right here. He survives in a fancy-like state. We have a fire beat on the internet made from Patrick's coughing on this episode alone. And I always thought the way they drank tea here is very quirky like. Walking small taking 15th place. This episode is revolved around Plankton trying to teach Spongebob how to be more assertive and just overall mean. Now I love this version of Spongebob and I think it is a rare moment that should be not taken for granted. And this episode is an amazing watch. Spongebob, in a very comedic way, becomes a big jerk. 
And I think Plankton tagging along and help instigating the situation is hilarious. But of course, SpongeBob undoes all the damage he did, making everyone happy and foiling Plankton's plan. It is a very unique, one-of-a-kind episode that I would definitely recommend as a watch. 14th place is Naughty Nautical Neighbors. Maybe I just like the mean episodes. Basically, Squidward makes Patrick and Spongebob hate each other with false goofy messages. And it actually ends up working and it makes the both of them betray each other. But in very meme-worthy fashions... Spongebob and Patrick slowly fight for the affection over Squidward in order to be their new best friend since they no longer like each other. Patrick tries to grab a double, everyone loves it. At the expense of Squidward's house, Spongebob and Patrick are both friends again. This is the karma you receive for trying to split up the pair of Spongebob and Patrick. 13th place, last of A+, right before we get to S, is culture shock. Squidward is hosting a talent show where everyone from the entire Bikini Bottom is showing up to celebrate and judge everyone, critique them for what they're worth. Mr. Krabs getting a lot of business. Look at the amazing acts we have. We have Gary. We have Pearl getting clout just cause her dad owns the place. Gary on the mic. Sandy has a way with words. She says, quoting about Gary, Ever since this dropped, Eminem's been real quiet. Though Bikini Bottom didn't like it, I loved Squidward's act and his amazing dance. If we didn't have it, we would be missing a meme in history. SpongeBob steals the spotlight by just being the janitor. Mr. Krabs, get paid. Look at him over there. SpongeBob, everyone loves him. Amazing episode. The top 12 is Texas entering the S tier, and I think it rightfully deserves this spot. We get Sandy's beautiful song about her home and how she misses it. Cartoons don't usually put soul or goofiness or lore like this just in general anymore, and it's very happy to see, even though it is kind of goofy at some parts. It builds up Sandy as a character and it even makes a grown man like Mr. Krabs cry. After all the endless jokes and hilarious memes from this episode, they all come together and that it's okay to be away from Texas as long as she is where her friends are and where her heart is. The double one is Sandy's Rocket at 11th place. SpongeBob and Patrick decides that it's a good idea to steal Sandy's rocket that's meant to go to the moon, in which they aim for the moon, but they miss instead, and goes right back down to Bikini Bottom. But they don't know that they're in Bikini Bottom. What they think happened is that they landed on the moon, and it looks exactly like Bikini Bottom, and they think everyone here is aliens. So they go around snatching and blasting everyone, in a way that I find so enjoyable to watch. And as a child, for some reason, when this episode came on, I was like super happy. It was up there with my favorites. Obviously, Sandy comes down and after a mass confusion, I'm assuming she actually can't explain what happened and it is all settled. We are entering the top 10 and 10th place is Employee of the Month. An amazing episode that everyone should definitely watch. Squidward doesn't care about work. Obviously, that's typical of Squidward. However, when Spongebob starts to glow about how easy it is to get employee the a month because he's gotten it so many times. And for some reason, Spongebob is afraid that Squidward is about to take his reputation and his place. So after a failed sabotage from Spongebob's end, Squidward has decided that it is war against Spongebob for the employee of the month title, but Spongebob is not going down easily. He's going in slices. At the end of the day, their end goal is to get to the Krusty Krab and immediately try pleasing Mr. Krabs so that perhaps he will give them the employee of the month. But they become workaholics and overwhelm Mr. Krabs, destroying the Krusty Krab for like the 30th time which the residents of Bikini Bottom get free Krabby Patties, which is amazing because, you know, they cost a lot of money. Mr. Krabs isn't cheap with that, and it ends up being Mr. Krabs is Employee of the Month. 
because the other two fumbled and dropped the bag. We are now at the single digits. At number nine is Bubble Stand. Now, I'm sure many can agree with me here that this is definitely an S tier episode. SpongeBob sells bubbles and how to blow bubbles all for a quarter. SpongeBob is the ultimate bubble artist. If he was in Danganronpa, that would be his shtick. Squidward, as you know, gets hating, throwing shade at SpongeBob's business, being a loyal op. Squidward, after multiple attempts of failing to blow a simple bubble, finally decides to bust a move and do the technique that SpongeBob has taught him, in which afterwards, Squidward is then finally able to blow a perfect-ish bubble, a little bit overly, but it is a bubble that works and is large. You already know what happens to Squidward and his house. Poor Squidward with all the bad karma. Some of it I'm not even sure he deserves. Squidward's house thankfully does come back into place, but I'm almost guaranteeing that everything expensive got knocked off a shelf and destroyed. This had to be in the top eight. This is the very first episode of SpongeBob ever, and I think this is what helped blast its performance because this is pure gold, an S tier, and a banger. The realistic coral they decide to use for the opening cut. Beautiful glance at Bikini Bottom and a very eye-catching scenery of the houses of the main characters. We are immediately establishing that the pink chubby starfish is Spongebob's best friend that is hilarious and that we're already connecting to. He is instantly interested at becoming an intern and potential worker at the Krusty Krab, but he has to prove himself. Squidward, big nose, hating from the start, but Spongebob will prove himself as the Krusty Krab is immediately overwhelmed by anchovies. They are prepared for this to be the end, but Spongebob has other plans and ideas, saving them from almost guaranteed destruction, having an amazing music scene where he is able to prove he is the best fry cook out there and can quickly feed the anchovies in a timely manner. Mr. Krabs seeing this is obviously impressed at the rate in which Spongebob can do this and you know for a fact Spongebob is cooking way better burgers than Squidward ever could working there. He feeds the last anchovy, they head on their way and obviously you see that cash back there, Mr. Krabs is not gonna let Spongebob go and he is an official employee and this proves Spongebob is a legendary cartoon giving it a great start ahead. We are now getting down to the creme de la creme. We are here at seventh place. The amazing and classic fun episode where SpongeBob tries to teach Plankton how charming life could be if he was good or having fun. Plankton's variation of the fun song is amazing. SpongeBob's variation of the fun song is amazing, especially as a child, it'll go down in history. So how can I not add this to S tier? And how can I not? have this in the top 10. It is revealed through hilarious fashion that Plankton is still evil and that Mr. Krabs was right all along, proving to the audience that Mr. Krabs should most likely be trusted, especially when it comes to the secret formula. Plankton is mistaken for a jelly bean by Bubble Bass, which is hilarious. The top six, only saved for the best, is Pickles. Squidward denying food service and being a jerk to the rest of the customers is amazing content. Let me guess Tiny, a small salad, banger line that I use to this day. Introduction to Bubble Bass, where he decides that's best to hide the pickles under his tongue. Shout out Mama Pratt. This obviously makes Spongebob very upset as he believes his fry cook skills are growing weak, to the point where he has to go into retraining with Mr. Krabs, in which through the Krabs method, it actually works and SpongeBob knows how to do it perfectly. Bubble Bass gloats as he feels like he can trick SpongeBob for the second time, but SpongeBob said, no sir, let me see under that tongue, bam, nut. There's also someone car keys under there, which means Bubble Bass has no ride. SpongeBob is deemed as the formidable fry cook he always was and he no longer lost his confidence. Taking fifth place in the top five is Jellyfish Jam. SpongeBob has taken a real liking to one of the jellyfish he has caught and found, keeping it as a pet. This episode introduces us to one of the most fire songs in history in humankind in the making. 
through seizures and parties, we can all love this episode for what it's worth. The jellyfish decide to betray Spongebob, outnumbering him and hurting him, just so they can party. I mean, they bump and look at that. There is so much amazing content that happens in this episode alone, that I feel like it could be an entire video by itself. In fourth place, a formidable foe is Ripped Pants. I mean, who doesn't love this meme right here? SpongeBob decides to prove that he can gain muscle, lift them weights, but after ripping his pants, he finds out that everyone loves the act and laughs every time in hysteria when he does so, so he believes it is his calling. But he eventually ends up overplaying the joke and making everyone annoyed because he keeps ripping his pants until he eventually takes the joke way too far and pretends to die in which obviously a lot of people decided that it wasn't funny anymore and they were like you know what this is the last straw we angry with you now even sandy decided to scold him but after assembling an amazing team and choir he produces one of the most banger songs in the spongebob lore and universe this episode brings everything you want to see in spongebob Redemption arc, an amazing song, fun times, hilarious jokes, where at the end, even though he embarrasses himself, he knows that's all good. We are about to get to the top three, which are the most amazing selective episodes in the Spongebob series alone. They go way past season one, and they are probably some of the best overall in general. These three hold a lot of meaning, so congratulations to them. Third place might as well be taking the diamond standard is Hooky, where the hooks come to town. It is basically about fishermen that try and fish out the residents of Bikini Bottom. Mr. Krabs tried to explain the danger to Spongebob, and it gives us an inside look and a reminder that these are fish. But against Mr. Krabs' warning, they decide to go because Patrick sees cheese. And I won't even lie, Patrick sees no danger here. And I bet human cheese has to be a lot better than the crusty crab cheese. I mean, look look at that gawk gawk, he just left the hook. Patrick shows SpongeBob how to tease the fishermen, where they can actually use these things as rides. Because when the fishermen start to pull up, and it just goes too high, they can simply just skydive and float down. Which, honestly, if it's always a guaranteed safety float because they're fish, I think it would be hilarious. And teasing the fishermen, I can imagine how annoyed my dad would be if every time he got a fish, that thing was always off the hook. Mr. Krabs has never heard of a break before, Common Manager L. And so he finds out that they're playing hooky at the hooks they told Spongebob not to go to. And so he can sense them out with his crab smell, trying to save them. Leaving Squidward to deal with an angry mob is hilarious. And even after giving a stern final warning to Spongebob, Spongebob becomes hooked and tunaed. But what Spongebob actually doesn't know is it's just a prank from Squidward and Mr. Krabs. Mr. Krabs knew that Spongebob wouldn't learn if it was just words, so he needed action. So after threatening his employment and humility, Spongebob fights to stay on, in which it actually works, but gives him lifetime embarrassment and a little bit of payback for not listening to Mr. Krabs three times. An amazing classic episode that you're never gonna stop watching. I think Squidward actually being able to do deviousness to Spongebob is pretty good. Spongebob has definitely learned his lesson and Patrick himself became a can of tuna. A lot of people probably expect this to be number one, but in a very close race, number two is Pizza Delivery. The entire episode is perfect. Almost flawless, if not flawless. I'm even gonna make it official. It's a flawless episode. We get a couple songs out of it, an amazing character arc for Squidward and Spongebob. The jokes are always on point and everything lands. You know this episode made you want to try Krusty Krab Pizza. There Spongebob is gliding in where we landed. I mean, just look at that. Even Squidward knows what's going on. And he's a critic. Spongebob does the amazing boulder scene. He drives the rock, proving Squidward wrong. And this way, they're actually able to deliver the food to the customer. 
where after being treated extremely rude by a male Karen, yeah you, Squidward decides to get character arc and take it on himself to defend his buddy Spongebob, which you know he secretly likes, even though he gives him a very hard time. I mean, Spongebob, you could line up a little bit, but there they are. A huge plot twist that's hilarious. So this is it. We are at the number one spot. The moment you guys have been waiting for. What is the best episode in season one in my opinion? Well, the pinnacle of Spongebob and the grand tier episode taking first place gracefully has to go to Sleepy Time. This may or may not come as a shocker, but to me, I will argue on this episode because this episode to me is just everything. This episode is amazing. You get character development everywhere in every aspect. You can see what other characters are like, what their dreams are, how they really are in person. We even get to hear Gary talk and hear his thoughts. We see Plankton as the villain he wishes he was. Being on that seahorse ride needing a quarter is hilarious. This episode just has that vibe for when you see it, you always think of nostalgia and good times. I think invading Squidward's dream is one of the most hilarious aspects of this. Because he makes it worse, but better at the same time. So it's even more like a nightmare for Squidward. Sweet dream, but a beautiful nightmare as you can see. Squidward's trying to impress a king, so Spongebob turns into a clarinet that makes such beautiful music that the king cries tears of joy. Squidward is happy, and then they play for everyone to hear and see. I mean, we even get Pearl development. This is such a great episode in my opinion in every form. I feel like I added my own take on this and my own personality, and I hope you guys really liked watching this. You guys are so amazing for watching this video in the entirety, and I hope you guys agree with some of what I said. If not, let me know in the comments what your opinions are, how do you rank them, what is your top 5 episodes, and I dare each and every one of you to have an amazing day.